God's house. Turn with your <coughs> Bible to Isaiah chapter number 9. Isaiah 9, and we're going to look at verse number 6. It's a familiar passage, and uh, I think at times I frequent this at Christmas, but I love it, and I believe it gives us a message that we need to hear. Isaiah writes, and he prophetically speaks. Aren't you glad for these prophetic uh, <coughs> prophecies that are given in Psalms and <coughs> other prophets as well, but they're messianic prophecies. And the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amen. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. <laughs> Let me this morning, if you would, for just a few moments, uh, look at what Isaiah gives us. Now, I don't want to look at anything else but those five names that are given at the ending there of Isaiah 9 6, where he said, His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. These names are highly significant for our Lord, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And uh, many names are given to God or to Christ uh, as we look at that tripart nature of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And uh, uh, it has been said that there are five, over 500 names that have been given to uh, uh, Jesus. Now, if you look at, 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 at me, let me just use my role. You know, some folks know me as Robert. Some folks know me as Bobby. Some folks know me as being a, 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 a son. Some folks uh, know me as being a dad. Some folks know me, one folk know me, my wonderful wife, wife knows me as being a husband. Uh, sometimes my mouth engages before my mind engages. <laughs> And uh, so some folks know me as being uh, uh, the lab guy. Some folks know me as being the chaplain. Some folks know me as being the pastor. Uh, uh, and I don't even want to know what the other names are. Folks may call me or call me as. Uh, but, but, but at any rate, you know, different names or different titles that are given. And so uh, in the Bible, though, we know that names have a much more significant meaning than probably what they do today. Man, sometimes I need to practice names before I uh, call people by their surname. And then even then I get them wrong. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they try to find the most unique name and uh, uh, they try to find the, the, the coolest way to spell it. And uh, uh, it, that, that seems to be what, what may be the trend of our time is. But in Bible times, uh, a name was something that was very special. And, uh, you know, uh, a man was uh, curious as he named his daughter Dora. You may say, what does Dora mean? But Dora means this. It's from Theodora, which means a gift from God. And so maybe some of you know some folks by the name of Dora. And uh, uh, maybe if you know some folks, and if I give you names, you'll say, wow, they didn't live up to their name. But has anyone ever met anybody by the name of Henry? My goodness, you guys look a sheltered life. <laughs> Only four people know people by the name of Henry. you got to get out there. All right, you, anybody here by the name of Henry? Is your middle name Henry? No. Oh, okay, but you, you, you know someone about anyone Henry, Henry in here? No. Are you Henry? No, I'm not Henry. I know. You know someone by Henry? Okay, sorry, sorry. I really got us confused. But Henry means this. It means a home ruler forever rich. Uh, 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 that, that name you may say, wow, I know someone by the name of Henry. They don't seem like they're a home ruler. Or, I don't know them as being ever rich. Have, has anyone ever heard of someone by the name of James? James. James. Well, have any James in here? No? Wow, okay. Uh, well, James means this. His name means superior. Maybe you'll say, well, I, I've met some James in my life, and they've not lived up to their name. But let me tell you, history 
may be full of men who are living in fear to their name being Henry or James. But in the Bible, it was not quite uh, as so. When we look at Jesus, we find that the names that were given to him, amen, a uh, wonderful counselor, a uh, mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, he lives up to his name. It's interesting, when we look at the Bible, you'll find that there was a man in the Bible, his name was Abram. Anyone know Abram? Uh, Abram, uh, 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 he was a patriarch uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, but when the Lord changed him, he said, you are no longer Abram, a high father, but you are Abraham, the father of many nations. He became the father of the Israelites, the Ishmaelites. Uh, we find him become the father of the Midianites. And uh, even in a wider sense, he becomes our spiritual father. Any of you ever seen that song, Father Abraham and Many Sons? Many Sons and Father Abraham? You know that song? Would you like to practice it this morning? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, maybe you're familiar with that. And on a wider sense, he is our spiritual father. You think of Jacob, his name was changed, uh, who was supplanter to Israel to becoming prince with God. Uh, and remember Jacob, uh, when he saw a ladder reaching up to heaven, he named the name of that place Bethel or Bethel, which we know as being house of God. A name had a significant meaning. You remember that when he wrestled with the angel, he called the name of that place Penal because it was there that he saw the face of God. So names had a very significant meaning. A Samuel means ask of God. David means beloved. And it could go on and on. But we look at Jesus. We look at the Son of God and what His name means and, and what it means to us. Over 500 days. But what does Christ of Christmas mean to you? What does the Christmas child, what does that name mean to you? Jesus was described as being, he said that I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the vine. He said, before Abraham, I was the I am. Jesus, his name means Jehovah. Jehovah has become a savior. Uh, Messiah, the Greek uh, is, is the Hebrew for the Greek word Christ. We read of him being the Lamb of God, the sacrificial work upon the cross. Jehovah, the self-existent one. He was the son of God. He was the son of man. The name of, uh, of Jesus. We find that, that uh, uh, He was the Word that was made flesh. He was the Holy One that was without sin. He is the Redeemer, the One who brought us, bought us from the penalty and the condemnation of sin. He is the King of glory. He is Shiloh, or the Peacemaker, the Good Shepherd, the Great Shepherd, the Chief Shepherd, speaking of His atoning work on the cross and His intercessory work and His, his, his Kingdom of, of glory. He is the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the Chiefest among 10,000. He is altogether a lovely one to remind us of his beauty and his perfection. He is the Nazarene. He is the carpenter. He is the servant of Jehovah to show us of his lowliness. Aren't you glad that Jesus was born in a stable? In a lowly place. It was a lowly place that all could feel comfortable coming to him. Jesus should make all feel comfortable in his home. The Christ child. Let me look quickly this morning. The Bible says that his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I pray that the Lord will help me bring it home to you in the next few moments. His name shall be called Wonderful. He always has been, and he always will. He was wonderful when He created the heavens and the earth. He was wonderful in His being and in His glory and in His beauty. He was wonderful in the Old Testament because He was patient and loving. You know, I, I look and allow me 
to share my story. I look at my life and I see I had a wonderful mother and a wonderful father because they were very patient when they were afraid. And my growing up and that nurturing and guiding me in the right direction. Wonderful. Do you understand that Jesus Christ is the wonderful one? Even in the Old Testament, he was there before the foundations of the world, being the lamb that was slain. He was wonderful. Even before we fell, he was there to catch us in the fall. How wonderful was that? He created us and designed us. He didn't want us to sin, but he knew that humanity would fall and fall and sin. So even before we fell, he was there to catch, catch us in the fall. Talk about being wonderful. He was wonderful in his birth. No other human being was ever born like him. Amen. Wonderful. And that God was his father and that he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. He was the only begotten son of God. Amen. And a beautiful star led wise men to where this toddler would be. It was angels that filled the air on the night of his birth. Amen. Uh, this heavenly proclamation. One angel gave the message and then many angels began to sing and worship and glorify and herald the good news to men that there's a wonderful birth. Let me tell you, there was many babies born before him and many babies be born after him, but there was never a wonderful birth like his, he was the Son of God, and all of heaven proclaimed it. The humble shepherds, the learned and scholared wise men, they come to worship because he was wonderful. His birth was wonderful, but he was wonderful in his life. He lived a holy and a sinless life on earth. Remember him at the beginning, Jesus Christ, when he was beginning his earthly ministry, he was being baptized. And all of a sudden, that dove descends, and the Father speaks from heaven, and he says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. He lived a wonderful life. Jesus himself could say, I do always those things which please him. His, his contemporaries spoke of him, said that he in all points was tempted like us, but yet was without sin. He was wonderful in his life. He was wonderful in his works. Amen. He healed the sick. He opened blinded eyes. He, he brought the dead back to life. He cast out demons. He comforted the brokenhearted. He forgave sin. Who else could do this but God? As creator, he was wonderful in power over nature, turning the water to wine, sealing the tempest, and multiplying the loaves and fishes. He was wonderful uh, in his works because he proved that, that he had every right and all power to become our Lord and Savior because he lived a sinless life. One thing that every Christmas, as I read that story, you can call it juvenile if you want, but I'm arrested by this thought every year. That if I was God Almighty, and I knew I was going to robe myself in flesh and come down and dwell among humanity, but there I believe I would have been with cell phones and microwaves and cars and inside heat and good structure protection. But God didn't look when it was just going to be the right thing. God looked at when man needed it most and said in the fullness of time, Amen, He would come. Because His best intention was so wonderful because He had you and I in mind because He was thinking of us. Talk about what? And then He died a wonderful death he always spoke truth. No one else ever died as he did. He died as a propitiation for our sins. The Word of God says 
He took our place. How wonderful that yet when I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me and Christ died for you. And though he didn't deserve it, Brother Craig, he was wonderful enough to take on my sins so that he could pave a way for me that I may know God the Father and that I may have assurance of eternal life on this side of eternity. He is wonderful. Do you know this morning when you look at that nativity back there, I want you to realize that this Christmas, that the Christ child, His name isn't just Jesus. It isn't just Emmanuel. But it is wonderful because He was wonderful in every way. He is a wonderful God this morning. The second name that Isaiah said He would be called is that He would be called Counselor. Listen, we look at the ages past, we look at ages presence, and we look and we see that men has not accepted counsel. Do you know, I look at some people in their life, and, and I don't claim to be a scholar, but I look at some people in their life and think, man, they would not be in the situation that they are in if they would have listened to good counsel. Maybe you can look at areas of your life and say, man, I wouldn't have had to go through that heartache. I wouldn't have had to go through that rough time if I would have just listened to good counsel. Do you realize that Jesus Christ, He is the counselor? Amen. In a godless world, amen, there is only one who was crucified the only wise God and Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. And He did it because He wanted to take counsel to us. He's all wisdom. He's all guidance. The problem is we become very self-willed. We become very impatient. Amen. We want it to be upon our utter independence. Amen. But I need to tell you that God does all things and he is still in the advice and in the life guiding role if you will not to be in it. Six thousand years of human history. And you'll see that the frailty of man, they fail. But he has never, ever, ever failed. He is the counselor. What are the things that you need guidance for in your life this morning? The Christ of Christmas still counsels and still guides. God, help our life to be counseled and led by the supreme counsel of Jesus Christ. Not only is he wonderful, not only is he our counselor, but the Bible says that he is the mighty God. Throughout the past eternity, he was God with us. He was the God man who moved among us, performing miracles in his death. Amen. He is still the mighty God. He proved it. all those uh, religious leaders of the day and age wrong, that he was God. He proved the world wrong, that though they thought that he was going to fail, amen, he is still the mighty God. Brother Eli, they took him and they crucified him. They snickered, they laughed, thought that, thought, thinking that they had God done away with him, that they had seen the last of him. But three days later, amen, there came some women to the tomb, came Mary Magdalene, very early in the morning to the tomb. The Bible says as the stone was rolled away. She went, she got Peter and John. Others came and they looked and he was God. Do you know why? Because he was the mighty God. Even death itself could not hold him. The stone was rolled away. He was the mighty God. The religious leaders thought they had him out of their hair. Amen. Thought that they had seen the last of him. Amen. For 40 days, he appears and shows himself to folks. And then on the 40th day, he ascends and he says, it is finished. He sits down at the right hand of the Father and he is ever interceding for you and I. Amen. He is the mighty God. Amen. Not over every situation. Oh, praise God that He is mighty this morning. Amen. He reigns supremely. Amen. He is uh, the God who is enough. He revealed Himself to Abraham as being El Shaddai. El Shaddai. 
What is that? The God who is enough. The mighty God is enough this morning. He's mighty enough, amen, to walk with us. He's mighty enough to keep us. He's mighty enough to provide for us. He's mighty enough to keep our soul secure for eternity. He is the mighty God. Amen. I want you to think about this. That word mighty, it means power, majesty, might. Amen. He was, Jesus was there at, at creation when this world was spoken to existence. I've said this before, but let it embrace your heart and your mind. With these, when it was boarded, if I would turn on all the lights, it would be a little bit of light shining through the cracks of the window. But could you imagine that all there was was darkness? That mighty God begins to speak. And all of a sudden, there's light. There's land, there's water. There's all of creation at the very speaking of the mighty God. And then this mighty God pulls together the right ingredients and creates man. And then he breathes into him the breath of life. And then you and I are formed. He's the mighty God. That's mighty. That's mighty this morning. Amen. He is the mighty God. Think of the Caesars. Think of Alexander the Great. Think of all the great rulers who have come and gone. They were mighty, but they're mighty in the But he is still the mighty God. They may have been given a coin by the walls, but even in the circulation of money, even the face of all those mighty leaders are rubbed off the coin over time. Their might fades away. But there's one one who will never <coughs> and that is the gift of Christmas Jesus Christ the mighty God amen if the Lord should tarry the leaders of this church I'll be gone I'll be gone someone else will take the place of me amen I don't have but he'll still be mighty in every situation amen. he is the mighty God I'm moving quickly this, this morning but he is the everlasting Father. The everlasting Father. You see, Jesus said this. He said, if you see me, you see the Father. Amen. All those who walk the shores of Galilee, they see God the Father because they see Jesus Christ. But God's not done revealing himself. He is the everlasting Father. Lasting Father. Some of you in here know what it's like. Your earthly father, if he could choose, man, he would have held your hand and been with you through everything in life. But sometimes life situations doesn't allow this. God's plans are different. And so we say goodbye to the Father. But the Father of the fathers <coughs> will never say goodbye to us. He is the everlasting Father. He'll always be there. Amen. Always be there. The everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Amen. When Christ was born in Bethlehem the shepherds were watching over their flocks and they said peace on earth the angels. Amen. He is still the Prince of Peace. Peace. <coughs> Beth will come to the piano this morning. Daniel, the word of God says that God will keep us in perfect peace when our mind is stayed upon him. But while he's the Prince of Peace, he said he would give us peace for the great, not as the world gives. But he would give us peace that wouldn't be circumstantial or be able to be taken away. It's a deep sea peace that only he can My peace. He is the Prince of Peace. We live in a world full of turmoil, don't we? Sometimes I have to just stay away from the news. 
it's a little overwhelming to me. But one day, the Prince of Peace is coming back. And he is going to have peace forevermore when he sets up his kingdom. We'll set up that millennial kingdom in there in Jerusalem. He'll rule. But then in eternity, he will be the Prince of Peace forever. But he that which has begun a good work in you, he will finish. Allow him to give you peace and keep peace. He is the ruler of peace. You may say, Brother Samuel, no, but I, I struggle. No, no, that's a problem. You're, you're trying to rule it. God's not ruling. You gotta let the prince have the rule. That peace may be sustained. Would you stand all around the sanctuary this morning? Would you think about what was given that first Christmas? They came, the nativity is all lined out. There's animals. There's a feeding trough for Mary and Joseph and the baby. They're all alive in that feeding trough. There's a little <coughs> dive of sheep. There is the darkness of night, the moon of rain, the star that deceives the baby. Over top of a cross <coughs> in Bethlehem, where everybody is busy and they're stowed away in their room. A baby is born wrapped in swaddling clothes. The gift of that baby is this. That he is wonderful. No one may know Daniel about that baby. But there is the most wonderful gift that would ever be given to the world.